Hi, I'm Mark Davis, and I work at Yahoo in the Connected Life Business Unit. I run the ESP team, uh, Early Stage Product, and we focus on mobile, social, media, monetization, and platforms. And I spend a lot of my time thinking about what the future of Yahoo will be in those areas. So uh, you're asking me about what I've been doing and what I found interesting here. Well, what I'm finding now in the industry and also what I've seen a lot at this conference is the way in which things that were normally invisible and inaccessible to people, their relationships to others, the places they go, the things they do, basically the things that they care about in their lives are now becoming recorded in computers, recorded in cell phones, and made accessible not just to large companies but to people themselves. And what I think that's really going to bring about a change in is that the fabric of our social lives, the ways in which we connect and the things that we do, will allow us to connect to people in new ways. So what we're seeing on Facebook and LinkedIn and other sites like that is that the graph of relations is being made visible to people. But what we're seeing at Yahoo and other sites too is that the types of communications that people have with, you, with each other, the email, the IM, the SMS, the other messages that they send, are other ways that connect people uh, to one another. So part of our focus, um, mine in particular, is about using the mobile phone as one of the primary social devices that people have in their lives. So it's something that's always with you, carry it on your body, use it to talk with voice, use it to send text, to look at video or pictures, to take video or pictures, and also to sense what's around you, the locations that you're in, the places that you're at, the people that you're near. And what I think is really going to be possible going forward in the social graph is actually best told by um, a story by Mircea Eliana. So Mircea Eliana wrote a book called The Sacred and the Profane, and he talked about the Aborigines in Western Australia. And they're in this vast tra trackless desert, and they're never lost. And they're never lost because they carry with them the tent pole of the sky. It's this giant wooden pole that the tribe walks around carrying with it. And it's the center of the universe. And so because wherever they go is the center of the universe, they're never lost. And so wherever they are is the center of the universe, and their people are always with them. So I think that's really the fundamental change that's going to happen in the social graph, is that we thought of it as either you have to go to a destination to connect to your people, or you have to be in these silos of different communities. But I think ultimately with the phone and with the changes in technologies, is that your people will be with you wherever you are. And that, and that will be, and the center of the universe will be wherever you are. And I think ultimately that's going to be your phone. Um, that's going to be the most important social technology. And the ability for people that you care about and things that you care about to be readily available to you and connected to you throughout your day and throughout your life is what these types of technologies that we've been talking about at the conference will make possible. That sense of staying connected, being connected to the people and things that you care about wherever you are. So one thing I didn't mention before is that even though I work at Yahoo now and I work in, in the industry, I'm actually formerly a professor at UC Berkeley. And I got to meet Barry Wellman uh, here at the conference, and Barry's an old-time sociologist, very well known to people in the field. And even though we have tons of mutual contacts, we actually hadn't met before. And part of what happened um, at Social Graph Food Camp is we were sitting together and realized we had mutual connections and started to talk about our work. And part of what excited me and excites me about the technology here is that we're bringing together social science, the disciplines that people have used for over a century, trying to understand from psychology, how do people feel, what do they think, what do they care about, from sociology, how do connections among people actually work, and then the new machinery and apparatus we have for science, the billions of connections that are being stored at Yahoo and Facebook and Google and all others, and, and soon to come, I think, the connections of all those together to what would be the largest experimental apparatus ever constructed for understanding people and human behavior. So, Professors and, and folks in industry, both on the research and on the product side, really see the coming of a new kind of discipline of inquiry, computational social science, the ability to create models of human behavior and human attention, really at the scale of the entire planet, and to make available to researchers and to, and to citizens alike access to that vast web of activity that's actually going on. And um, I showed Barry one project we're doing called Tag Maps, which creates a map using uh, tags represented by Flickr photos of what people find interesting all around the world. And that kind of tool of seeing what are the places and objects and people that people find interesting around the world is something that exposes that underlying graph of human activity and attention. Uh, an example that Barry actually found interesting is that in the Presidio in San Francisco, one of the tags that's very large is Yoda. So there's a bronze statue of Yoda in the Presidio near Lucasfilm. It doesn't appear on any map that's made by cartographers 
but it appears because we're taking the collective attention of literally millions of people, filtering that and using the backend technologies we have to make available to people what we all find interesting. And so I think that the real exciting parts of the social graph are not what we're seeing just now today. They're not just how do we connect and how do we relate and how do we create graphs of relationships. When that becomes the infrastructure on top of which new applications and technologies can be created to connect us to each other and to connect us at scales that weren't possible before, then things like a tag map becomes possible. What is it that millions of people find interesting around me? What is it that my friends find interesting around me? So that we can c collect and represent and make available to all of us the activity and attention of billions of people around the world. That's kind of the promise from a research and science side and from user experience and value side that the social graph will make possible when it's made large enough and connected enough and um, accessible to all of us around the world.